How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch back with another review. Today it's a game from Vufu Studios called Mantis Burn Racing which is a top down racer. Really looking forward to bringing you my thoughts on whether it's worth your hard earned cash. Let's get into the Mantis Burn Racing review. There's no story here in Mantis Burn Racing, so let's move straight onto the audio where I'll let you listen for a moment or two. The audio in Mantis Burn Racing is described as an ambient electro soundtrack which is original and specifically made for this game. That may be the case but I didn't find any of the tracks in this that memorable or that enjoyable to listen to and at times I wish there had been more work done on this aspect of the game. The tracks sound a little generic for my tastes and the sound effects are all okay but nothing mind blowing here. For me, everything in the sound department just needed a little bit of improving but then again I do have to remind myself that this is an indie title and whilst it wasn't to my taste it may be to yours so bear that in mind. The visuals here however do have a really appealing aesthetic to them. The top down look of this game is not something which is all that common these days especially with the power these consoles are now capable of so it's really refreshing to see a game of this type. The cars look good enough especially when selecting them on the selection screen and the landscapes look really nice especially those backgrounds where there are three background themes, natural sand looking levels, snow and then the man made concrete tracks with plenty of buildings in the background. It's enjoyable watching the cars spray up all the sand in the air when racing or the cars spreading objects all over the place when hitting them and it's good that there are some bonuses which include the landscape itself which I won't spoil for you here. The car selection screen reminded me a little bit of Rocket League which I reviewed recently. You have quite a few options for changing the colour of your cars as well as the boost colour. It's a nice touch when you upgrade your car to the next level as well. The car slightly changes to show that it has more aggressive parts fitted and you'll need to use credits to upgrade your car to the next level. The impressive thing here is that the game runs at a constant 60 frames per second both in docked mode and in handheld and there was no slowdown that I could detect which was good to see. It run buttery smooth and the only thing which lets it down for me is the variety. Now I want to start in terms of gameplay by getting the negatives off my chest straight away and then we can talk about all the good things that this game does. I have to reiterate that this game for me anyways was not too far away from being great but for some design decisions. First of all the career mode which let me add is extensive is shown in a path like system and to a certain extent you can choose your route and you'll have to complete 150 events which sounds absolutely great at first problem is is you have 12 tracks overall which the switch version includes the snowbound DLC pack in this version and whilst mirrored in effect it makes 24 tracks in total however it does become rather repetitive rather quickly and the reason for this is you're playing the same tracks over and over again in the career mode especially at the beginning where the game only uses free tracks if the player does not have patience they could get turned off quickly by that and not return to the game Perseverance here is certainly key and I can understand why the developer has made it this way so you can build up to the faster classes later on as this is where you'll require the most skill and of course the use of that break. The second, uh, probably the most worrying to me is the online mode. The developer has actually done a fantastic job and it's easy to set up races with friends or to join a lobby and play with randoms. You even have cross-platform play here so you can play with friends on an Xbox, PS4 or PC. If you really want to just play against people on Switch, you can turn off the cross-platform. The problem is that there's hardly anyone to play with. The player base on other platforms has already moved on it seems and often I struggle to set up a race with a full 8 players and that was with cross-platform turned on which tells me there's not many people to play online with and you may have trouble playing with others unless you have some friends that you can play with locally 
who also own the game. Whilst we're on the subject, the Switch offers a split screen mode where up to four players can play in docked mode or two players on the Switch itself, which I think Vufu have made fantastic use of the system's capabilities here. You can also play up to eight Switches locally linked together, which sounds as if it could be great fun and is something we will certainly be taking part in, especially around the Christmas holidays. In terms of what the game does well, then the controls and mechanics here are spot on and the cars feel really great to control. It's really enjoyable drifting around corners jumping off large bumps and boosting to overtake feels absolutely great some tracks have nice little shortcuts which are nice to discover to get that advantage the learning curve is actually really well implemented here and I can actually see why the developer makes you replay the tracks so many times because you do need to memorize them. At first it's easy, you don't even need to brake, you can just drift around corners but later on it's much more of a challenge. Boost is required by either drifting or jumping. Once the boost bar is full you can use it tactically to when you need to overtake. Although the boost doesn't last overly long and you can only use it couple of times in each race. The races feel for the most part quite well balanced and there are three classes of vehicle which were in the original game. The Switch version brings with it the DLC Elite class as well, or Elite class sorry, which brings with it hover vehicles and a battle class where cars have machine guns and mine launchers for extra added carnage and this brings an extra level of fun especially when playing with friends. Away from the career mode where you'll need to experience all of the modes and classes at some point, you can set up quick races locally against the AI if you wish to and there are 12 modes to choose from so you'll be covered here ranging from time trial, survival, overtaking, spotlight and battle modes but to name a few. You'll get to experience all of these within the career mode in any case. There are a number of upgrades you can make to your vehicle from the suspension to boosts lasting longer and you'll need to pick up gears and the upgrade system is nice and simple to use as you go from rookie, pro, veteran and finally to elite where you can play with hovering vehicles the difficulty increases as you'll need to use your skill to make sure you're able to navigate those corners while drifting, flying and braking at the right times. The game becomes more fun as you get further because it becomes more challenging, but as I said earlier it requires you getting over that initial grinding nature of the game and that doesn't really cease throughout. You can also acquire other vehicles with credits to take part in other types of races requiring different vehicles in the career mode. The game for me offers significant amount of content here and for £15 it's going to keep many many people happy. 150 events in the comprehensive online mode, the game also includes all DLC Vufu have released for this game all in one package just for the Nintendo Switch. So in terms of my verdict here the game for me suffers some flaws, one of which is not entirely its fault in that there's hardly anyone playing this online right now. Unless a significant amount of people buy this game in the coming weeks, you will struggle to get an online game. However, Vufu have made every possible effort for you to include friends, whether online or locally, which is absolutely commendable. The soundtrack was not to my taste, and everything in the game is solid, if unspectacular. The game is large, so there may be enough here to tempt people who are not interested in the online mode. Some may find this a little bit too repetitive initially and while it gets better as you delve deeper nothing can alter the fact that there needs to be a few more tracks and more variation in the landscapes. For those who are big fans of Micro Machines and need that dose of nostalgia then this will scratch that itch and for £15 you really can't go too far wrong as the game does offer some fun racing, tight controls which is all packaged up in a game which runs at a buttery smooth 60 frames per second. This then for me, a solid 7 out of 10. Now I really hope you enjoyed today's Mantis Burn Racing review and if you did, I'd love it if you could hit that thumbs up button for me, that would mean a great deal to us. If you're a new watcher here then please consider subscribing to our channel for more reviews like this one. And last but not least, take the time, leave me a comment down below and I'll do my very best to respond to every single one of those. My name is Juan Romero from Switch Watch. You know what I'm going to say, guys. I'll see you on the next one.